Hello, good morning. Welcome to air conditioning because it's 110 degrees outside. Today we are attacking part two of converting this car over to E90 M3 suspension. Uh, today we're doing the rear control arms, um, mostly because I've got a really nasty shake on the highway and I think that means that some of my rear bushings have finally biddeth the dust. So unfortunately, one of the rear control arms was out of stock OEM. So I ended up just buying all uh, Delphi off of Rock Auto. So we have a whole bunch of stuff here in these uh, nice blue boxes. I kind of got the thumbs up on this from uh, a couple other BMW friends. And uh, yeah, looks like a decent part. Uh, apparently the biggest difference uh, between these and OEM is uh, these don't come with new hardware and they don't have M badges on them. Actually, neither does the limb forder because they're like ground off. So what these do uh, is they're replacing uh, these stamped sheet metal control arms, this one, this one, and that one, with these uh, cast aluminum ones. Oh. And uh, some of the uh, bushings are spherical ball joints instead of uh, rubber bushings. So longevity should be a little bit better as well. And it also allows for a slightly more aggressive alignment like an M3. So good times all around. And then this will have full uh, M3 suspension, which is nifty. You can't do this on an E46 because the uh, subframes are completely different. There's very little in common between the E46 M3 and the non-M3s, but the E90 is all pretty much the same stuff as far as the chassis is concerned. So yeah, now we get to take all this apart. Pretty possum. Hell yeah. We got a You gotta set your BMW to Wumbo. <laughs> things yep. yeah how, how, sorry grinds things how much you loving this not not a whole lot honestly it's it'd be a lot better if the car was about three feet higher off the ground it'd be a lot better if it was a fucking e36 because just trailing arm and knuckle yeah but this is the superior hand you can superiorly handle my ball yeah we're like 15 minutes into this and my ankles and knees have called it quits already Wonderful. I need to find new hobbies. You join me now in the wheel well of my BMW uh, where I'm using an induction heater. On, on the, the wrong bolt. What? Hey, how about that? Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't see. Anyway, uh, you join me now as we are attempting to get the, uh, the rear alignment eccentrics. Uh, just like with most cars, uh, the bolt freezes inside the, seizes inside the bushing sleeve, and uh, yeah, leads to this sort of misery. Everything else seemed to be coming apart really great until we got to these, and then uh, and the, the nuts came off fine. Then the whole operation fell apart. Yeah, so we took a one hour round trip to, uh, to Newton to go uh, borrow this from the wizard shop. Wizard. Wizards. Because, well, for some god awful reason, he gave me access to the shop. I don't know. Bad why. idea. Oh, that smells terrible. Now, now you can stop. Yeah, wow. now it's hot. So I had a uh, Lexus LS 400, and uh, it had a shake on the highway, 
Okay. Shocker. And, and we tried to uh, do an alignment on it. Uh, myself and Tyler Potter. Uh, we put uh, we put the LS400 on the alignment rack, and we could not get any of the alignment hardware whatsoever to break loose. And they had the bigger he had the Tyler had the bigger version of this yeah. from some uh, Chrysler recall because of course. And we got those bolts cherry hot, and we still could not break them free. Uh, and then I sold the car because I was not going to deal with that. I hate all of this. Can I go home yet? It is the next day. Uh, the rear toe arms just completely kicked our asses. And uh, yeah, I think the only solution here is to cut them out with a Sawzall. And I've already ordered new ones, so they'll get here Monday, which means I should be able to get the car back together on Monday, hopefully, and get it to the alignment shop on Tuesday, which means I'm without a car until then. Uh, well, I, I've got the Corvette, but the AC doesn't work, and it's in the triple digits, which I think I've mentioned in the last three videos. Watch out for video four, where I'll actually fix it, maybe. Uh, it needs like $400 and stuff. Anyway, the two top control arms are out on the driver's side. It, it was extremely straightforward, but there was a whole lot of going one click at a time with the old ratcheting box end. And then I needed uh, a swivel on my one inch to get the bolt out of uh, this guy here. So we've got our two control arms here. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell which arm goes where because they've got one domed side of the bushing on each side. And actually, let's take a look at what these bushings are like. Yeah. Ooh. That is, that is crusty. Oh, this guy. I think that's actually, that is actually, I think a, that might actually be a sp spherical bearing from the back. I'll, I'll have to double check the part numbers, but yeah, you can see the difference. The arch here is so that if, uh, if this suspension, if you get in a wreck and it compresses the suspension, this is so that they bend in a direction that they won't foul on anything else. So it's to keep these arms here from bending in a way that would interfere with the fuel tank and the ones back here to keep them from uh, interfering with the shock or the axle so that you still have a chance of getting off the road and uh, to a safe location even after uh, curb checking because you're doing sick drifts in your base model 3 series. BMW knows their audience. All right, got two of our new control arms all in and 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 tightened down and you can see here they're, they're ball joints, they can wiggle any which way you want and we've got our conical sections that mount up to our uh, our knuckle here and uh, look at that all the same length and thread pitch a bolt wonderful and we got the threads cleaned up on those so I didn't have to go uh, one click at a time with the ratcheting wrench when putting these together I could just get it finger tight and then cinch it down but yeah now I just got a uh, let's see I think these sides are still rubber rubber bushed so I'm just gonna get these mostly tight uh, and then wait until we can put a uh, jack underneath the hub, get it to ride height and then tighten them down to actual torque. But Well, it's been about eight days cause uh, I've been sick and also we had to wait for the new bolts to get here. So uh, that's why there haven't been videos in a while. But I did get these new control arms on up here and then we've got the bracket for the wires which looks very tidy now. I have to try and cut off that bolt there, and I'm liking it even less now that I'm looking at it. i got the new bolts over here. Uh, these things were $50, and then I've got the hacksaw with a uh, demo blade. So, yeah, the torch. <laughs> Three blades, four battery charges, and one and a half pizzas later, then we got the stupid thing out. Let's put the new one in, and then at least it'll look like we did something. Hello, it's been three weeks. 
I ordered new control arms, they finally showed up. Took them forever, but here they are. Yay, I have been carless for two and a half weeks now. Um, adjustable, this is, uh, Megan Racing was like the only recommended brand I could find that had OEM style, solid uh, spherical end bearing bushings, just like the M3 control arms have, but not only for the M3. So this is what's going on. As you can see, turnbuckle adjustment, lots of adjustability. This should allow for the dudes at the alignment shop to do as close to a good job as they can. I don't know, let's, uh, there it is compared to the old one. Fantastic. Let's get this done, I'm, I feel like garbage. How's it going? Spouter. Spouter? Wow. Eat it. Mm. Yay! Wrenchies. Heck yeah. So I gotta get the, uh, I gotta get the control arms in roughly the ballpark length before we install them. So I just stuck bolts through one of the old control arms and that ought to get us close enough that uh, we can dial it in with the eccentrics afterwards. Uh, we've got the toe plates over there that we're gonna use. Uh, yeah, these are, you know, pretty trick. It's just left hand or right hand and left hand threaded uh, uh, threads. So I can just turn this one away and it spreads everything out. And we are almost, there we go. There we go. And then I just... Control arm sandwich. Yeah. I just gotta get these jam nuts done up and then we know that this is the right length and it's good to go on the car. I am mostly just astonished that somehow Todd handed me a wrench that was already adjusted perfectly the right size. <laughs> I don't know what sort of... Uh, powers of foresight you possess good sir but uh can i borrow some because then i wouldn't have you know had to leave my car over at your house for a month three weeks <laughs> all right oh. one control arm ah 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 two control arm now this one i already got roughly the right length so let's just double check our work yep all right so then we got all our bolts our new eccentrics our old these things kind of suck because they kind of pulled some of the threads out of the knuckle on the way out, so I'm not looking forward to this. Uh, so we're going to put these in first. <laughs> Who's on first? These. And uh, some anti-seize on abso freaking lootly everything. I don't know why, but I kind of love things that come in cans with brushes built into the lids. There's something very old-timey feeling about it. <laughs> Just like a good evening in. There we go. We have a half inch of toe in. Oops. All right, well, before Tyler ruined everything, what were we at? 70 and 5 eighths on front and rear. Heck yeah. All right. Well, let's get the quick jacks out of here, pack some stuff up, and uh, trundle this thing on over to the alignment shop. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up at the crack of early and uh, ride over there to hand them the keys and tell them what I want done. Give them a piece yeah. of your mind? Give them a piece of my mind for not yet aligning my car. Gosh. By telekinesis. Yeah, they should have known, really. Todd had a moment to reorganize his garage, so look at all these beauties. We got the uh, Honda CB1100, the Honda, what is this, CB750K? CB650. 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 The CX500 Turbo, the BMW R60, uh, the Twin Star, and I recognize this from an earlier video, the uh, Honda Dream. So yeah, a lot of Hondas and a conspicuous BMW. Just like the rest of the shop, actually, a whole lot of Hondas, conspicuous BMW. <laughs> it's a trend. 
Well, as much as I'd love to say we just took the car to the alignment shop and lived happily ever after, sadly, that is not what happened. I showed up the next day to uh, hand over the keys and tell them what I wanted, an alignment, and um, they said that they couldn't align it. They said the car was too low. Now, I went to the same chain that had aligned the car in the past, just to a different location, but they showed me their alignment targets, and yeah, the hooks were absolutely massive. There was pretty much no chance of that thing fitting on any sports car, much less, you know, mine, which was sitting at M3 right height, which is pretty, you know, the fender sits pretty close to the tire. So I drove the car across town to the exact shop that aligned it twice prior and uh, let them take a look at it the next day. First red flag, entirely new set of people there that I had not seen before, so clearly some employee turnover. Interesting. Get a call the next day. They say they can't align the car. I ask why, and they say, well, it needs suspension work. I say, could you please uh, provide me some more details? We just finished replacing all the suspension on that car. And they said, yeah, we'll get back to you. Also, we broke off the jack points while getting it off our four-post lift. I go, interesting. Uh, the car does not sit any lower than the last two times you aligned it, so I'm kind of impressed. Next day, they get back to me, and they say that alignment hardware in the rear is seized, which we had just finished replacing, and they said they need a special tool to align the front camber. For those of you not aware, the front camber on an E92 BMW is not adjustable. On the M3s it is, but not on the normal E92s. So I asked for more detail on what was seized in the rear, and they said they'll get back to me. And they also said they were still waiting on the parts for the jack pads. Two more days pass. They say they've aligned the car, but the jack pads haven't come in yet. They'll be there next day. So it ended up being a full week at the alignment shop, and I also asked them to balance the wheels, because on the drive over there, I still noticed the car had a shake to it. So I thought maybe I threw a weight out of one of the wheels. It happens. Whatever. So they balanced them. I finally got the car back. Still has a bad shake above 60 miles an hour. Another few days pass, and I uh, finally do what I've been avoiding this whole time. Uh, I didn't take it to the car ninja initially to have things balance in line because he's been swamped lately, and I just didn't want to take up his time. Finally, I showed up, and things had actually calmed down a bit. We took the wheels off. I put them on the wheel balancer, and three out of the four wheels required more than an ounce of weight. And what was on them was a hilarious combination of old weights and new weights put in four locations. And I struggle to see how this big name chain messed it up that bad. It is literally harder to make a cheeseburger than it is to balance wheels on a modern wheel balance machine. So I have no idea what on earth was going on there. I'm not going to name and shame. Uh, chances are that employee doesn't even work there anymore. Um, but yes, five weeks later, the BMW is back. And my goodness, is it good. I've never driven a car that has so much feedback through the seat, through the steering wheel. You can feel everything that's going on. And to a lot of people, that sounds miserable. But to me, it is absolutely perfect for what I use this car for and what I enjoy in cars myself. And I'm absolutely thrilled. It is butter smooth on the highway and it feels responsive and it feels tight. And I'm a huge fan of all of it. So that more or less concludes replacing the entire suspension on my car. It's got now the Bilstein B12 coilovers all around, M3 control arms all around, and those Megan toe arms in the rear. Because as I found out, the M3 toe arms do not fit the non-M3s. It also has new front brake rotors, because Johnny's best guess after hearing that the wheels had supposedly just been balanced was that front brake rotors can cause a wobble not just pulsing through the brakes. And I did notice that the wobble went away or changed when I got on the brakes. So I ordered some new uh, Cardone front brake rotors. I think they were, had them, we put them on up at the Wizards and didn't fix it. But hey, car's got new brake rotors now. I'm okay with it. The ones that were on there were from the junkyard and we just resurfaced them. So not exactly great stuff. But now the car is good. Now I can take some road trips and now I can stop worrying about all this 
old worn out suspension. It's amazing what happens when you maintain a car. Like legitimately this thing kicks the crap out of my Corvette and uh, my buddy's modified BRZ that I drove uh, on the pig trail last year. Just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the Corvette's probably more competent, but the BMW just is a way better driver's car. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and start editing so I can get this video out. Thanks for watching.